Hello, everybody. I'm Chris Kent. I'm a Office Development MVP. Uh, there's my Twitter. There's my blog. We're going to talk about UI fabric icons and how you use those in column formatting and uh, view formatting. So we're going to kind of walk you through the icon name, some of the basics, and then some of the ways you can get a little fancy with that. All right, so let's take a look. So we'll jump over to our classic Warrior Horses site. All right, and on our Warrior Horses site, we like to apply all sorts of different types of formatting uh, so we can make things a little easier. So we're not stuck with just a boring old list, right? So we've seen lots of different examples of this. And if we go over to the things list, we're going to apply a couple of things there. So you can see we've already got several formats in here. It's pretty cool. But uh, for those that aren't aware, there's a whole series, like 1,000 plus icons available to you, and you don't have to do anything else. Uh, if you want to get fancy and use like a font awesome type of icon or SVGs, uh, we've done some demos on that. There's some samples on that. But this is a much simpler approach, and that's just how can you put an icon like this little rocket here? All right, so if we come over here and we'll just mess with our exciting sentiment column just to kind of show that. Now we're going to go column settings. We're going to format this column. Right, and we want to go directly to advanced mode. Um, eventually, you'll be able to pick icons of the things, and that's coming very soon. Uh, but for now, we're going to write this kind of in this advanced mode over here. All right, and we're just going to copy and paste some formats here. We can get these directly from the sample site. I'll have a link for that here in just a little bit. Uh, but let's say if I wanted to just type this, right? So I wanted to just create a little format here, and I want to say this is Elm type. All right, we'll make this a div. Very exciting. Comma. And then we're going to say, all we want to do is show an icon, right? So we're going to say attributes. In this case, let's say subset of properties. So we have a little more squigglies. In this case, all we do is we type an icon name. And then right here is where we can paste any kind of icon name we can. Now, I happen to know a couple of icons, right? So here is Fang Body, right? Which should be a dog. Very excited to get a dog. Makes a lot of sense, right? Now, where do you get these icons? All right, so you can get those in a couple of spots. The first one is if you go to uifabric.io. Again, all these links will be showing up, and probably David's been posting them right now. Um, either way, you come here, and you go to Styles, and you're going to pick Icons here. And you can see if you scroll down, eventually, you get this kind of icon selector, and you can pick all those. Um, and this works fine. Um, I actually find it easier, especially if I'm having uh, end users pick icons, um, is this site right here, which is the UI Fabric icons.azurewebsites.net. All right, so you can see it doesn't have all the extra uh, documentation and code that has Fabric and React and all that other junk mentioned that might confuse people. It just has the icons, right? And you can search here. So if I wanted to, like, instead of a dog, I wanted a cat, right? There's a cat right there. So if I hover over it, I can see. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can kind of see that. If I hover over it, right, we can see the word cat is there. So I'm going to paste that instead. I don't like the... This one's not called dog, but it's called fang body. You'll find that the names are fairly inconsistent uh, with some of these things. So you just kind of have to look through them. We switch to the cat. Now I've got a lovely cat icon here. Wow, that's exciting, right? So let's see. You know, let's try that. There we go. I guess I haven't seen that. That'll make that a little bit easier to focus. All right. So now we've got a cat. So that's pretty straightforward, right? What if I want to apply color or I want to apply size? Uh, if you'll actually do that a couple different ways. So because this is a font icon, right? So it's a it's using text for that. Uh, we can add just style properties here. I'll come on over here and we just do something as simple as color, right? And we can say lime. That's my Wow, a lime cat. Very exciting. Right? If we want to make it larger, right, we can come in here and we can say font size. Right? In this case we'll say, you know, 36 pixels. That sounds exciting. And it is exciting. Look at that big lime cat. Wow. You know, we can do even other things. So maybe we want to make this more theme sensitive, right? So this is a pretty easy way to handle that. But we could also do things like in our attributes, we could add a class. And in this case, we're going to say uh, MS font color. And we're going to say, uh, I think it's theme primary. Well, let's see. Theme primary, right? So we want to add that. Yeah. Mine's a nice brown color for this horse site, right? But that'll that'll work. We could also say, you know, some of the standard colors, right? So if I want to make this red, which is that standard Microsoft red or magenta, all those things. And again, those those colors and these classes are all listed here on the uifabric.io site, right? You can find all of that in this colors section. But that's the idea. That's the general idea for icons. And we've got a ton of different samples 
on how you can work with these icons and how you can apply them conditionally and so on. But what I wanted to show you also is a couple of different techniques, right? So what if instead of you know a cat, I wanted to do this heart icon, right? And that's nice, right? There's That's one option. If we look over here and if we go back to, to this guy and we search for heart, we'll find that there's this heart that's just an outline and then there's heart that's a solid, right? So the heart, uh, let's see, fill, I think is the other one. Yes. So sometimes it's solid, sometimes it's fill, sometimes it's the word mask. You just kind of have to look through that to figure that out from there. But what if I want to kind of combine that? Like that's cool that it's heart fill, but what if I wanted to go a little more elaborate with that, right? So, so if I grab something, I'm gonna go ahead and just paste one so I don't have to type all this in front of you. We'll paste it and I'll go through what it's doing, right? So instead now I've got both an outline and I've got a, a solid that I can color whatever I want. And the way we've done that is we've created kind of a parent div um, and we set that position, this is a CSS property to relative. So we can position the elements inside that div to where we want exactly. And we also have this thing here that just says, don't show an icon if the sentiment value doesn't exist. All right. So if we come down here, I've just got my children elements. So the first one, pretty straightforward, it's just that heart fills, that background. I've set it to that nice red, right? And I set that the size. So therefore, that's easy, right? It's just kind of draw that nice red icon in the back. And then I'm going to draw the heart, which is that, that black outline you're seeing. So I'm, I'm setting that to black, and I'm positioning this using absolute positioning. And I'm just putting it right at the top, you know, zero, zero, right there. So it's just hovered right over the other one. And it creates this nice kind of outline here, right? And that's pretty cool, like when you want to do, like, uh, I think it's heartbroken. Right? So there's a couple other different heart ones, like, ooh, fancy. Right, so you can start to see that now things look a little better, right? Now it's not, I'm not just working in, you know, wireframe type colors or not just working in a single color. I can I can go a little crazy with this. All right now, if I wanted to take that a little further, because of course we do, all right, I'm gonna copy paste this one as well, and we'll take a look at it. So all we're doing now is we're adding some conditions here. All right, so we're still doing that heart fill in the background, uh, but now we're gonna set that color dependent on if the sentiment is positive, negative, or neutral. All right, so we're gonna set that. We're also gonna set that icon the same way. So we got the icon name here, and we're just using these if statements. Again, these samples will be available to you. Um, so if it's positive, we use the heart. If it's negative, we do that heartbroken. And otherwise, we use health, which is another heart icon, but it doesn't have the word heart in it. So if we preview that, wowee. So you can start to see uh, we get some pretty cool ways to kind of draw with the out of the box icons. Uh, and so we can go a little further even with this. So let's just save this and let's move over here. And it's sensitive to time here. We'll just do this one real quick. So now we've got the idea we want to combine this color. Right? We want to show sentiment. We also want to show the status, right? We've got done in progress, kind of the classic status here. Go to column settings. We're going to format this column. Again, because it's a choice column, we're offered this kind of formatting wizard, but we're going to hit advanced mode. I'll scroll over so you can see these columns. And in this case, again, I'm going to cut and paste. So you guys can see what I'm doing here. And in this case, you know, we're doing a very similar thing, right? Uh, but now we're combining both the sentiment and the status columns. The status because we're is represented by current field, and then sentiment is how we're referencing that other column. So we're using the square brackets with a nice dollar sign, and then the internal name of that column. All right, and so all we're doing there is let's actually preview and see what we're doing. Wow, we! So now we're combining it. So now our sentiment is shown by one of these emoji icons. So we're doing that same nice thing where we've got the full circle mask. We're setting that to yellow to give us that nice yellow background for the smiley. All right, and then we're actually setting, you know, based on the sentiment, whether it's negative, we use sad, right? Or emoji neutral. Be aware that the emojis are also a little weird, right? When you look at for the emojis, right? So that's what I mean by the names are a little bit strange, right? So this is actually emoji two. And this is emoji with this crazy mouth. All right, we also notice sad is its own one. So it's a little bit strange. Uh, really, you just kind of go through and you kind of learn them as you go. All right. All right. So if we go back here, so all we're doing there is we're applying that. So that's the same thing we saw with this heart. Right. But now we're doing another thing where we've thrown another child element, which is another div. And in this case, we're checking the current field, whether that status is to show this tiny little icon and determine the color of that tiny icon. So now we're combining those fields and you can see the only difference is we're also doing absolute positioning, but instead of top and left, we're positioning it based on the right and the bottom. In order to make that work, we had to make you know, width and a height for this div. 
But by doing that, you can sort of position these icons, which is really great because sometimes, like you'll see things like if you look at Contact, for instance, that's one that shows up. Uh, they've got this nice thing where they've got like a contact icon, and then they even have these little like block contact, right? Or contact is being edited, or we love this contact, it's our favorite. And that's really cool. Uh, one of the problems is you can't independently color those statuses, and it's fairly inconsistent, right? What if I wanted a delete contact button, right? Um, I suppose I could use this block, but I might want to use that for something else, right? Or if I wanted to promote contact, so I want a little arrow instead. The idea is using this absolute and relative positioning, we can position our own little status icons here and use the whole you know, UI fabric icons and make all sorts of neat combinations here. And we can do that whether that's using a single field, multiple fields, uh, by just referencing them across column formatting or even view formatting. All right, cool. So that's what I want to show demo-wise. So that's what we got there. So if we just quick review, we take a look here. The, I, the main idea is to use this icon name property under attributes. Once you do that, you'll notice I didn't have to do anything else. I just use that and then I can treat it as if it were text. So I can set the size to the font size property under style or color. If I want to take advantage of those nice uh, UI fabric kind of theming styles, I can. Uh, the main thing to note uh, is that icon names are case sensitive, right? So it's don't be sad if heartbroken doesn't work right because you have a lowercase b. Um, double check that. Um, the other thing is not every icon is supported. So sometimes we, there's icons listed there and you'll try them and they don't seem to work. Um, and that's just related to kind of the version of the the version of the font that's being used on the UI fabric site versus the version of the font that's being used in the list view itself. Now, generally those get updated, but sometimes they can be out of sync. So brand new icons don't always show up. It's a bit of a frustration. Uh, the best thing you do is just try them uh, in a simplified format that's just an icon. Uh, if it works, then you're good. Also, keep in mind, if you want to do those kind of background colors, um, if we take one more look over here, um, you can easily find those by either typing the word solid here, right? You start to see all these nice solid ones you can use as a background, you know, and there's usually a wireframe version that goes on top of that. Sometimes it's saying mask is only one of them, but it's also fill is the other way, right? So they got a nice star one you could do that with. Or right, you wanted to put a star inside a circle, uh, you can easily do that, or right? create kind of a, a badge or something else. So be sure to check all that out. All right, and finally, check out the full documentation here. We've got a, these samples I just showed you are available in the generic icon overlay samples over in our uh, list formatting repo where we've got tons and tons of samples um, and lots of them have to do with icons. If you go to our kind of sample browser, uh, there's a whole section just on icons. Uh, if you go there, you can find out how other people are using these icons to correspond with status or even choice fields or progress or all sorts of other different things you could do with that. And then there's the two UI fabric kind of icon sites. Again, I prefer the bottom one. Uh, however, I think the bottom one tends to have more of the unsupported icons because uh, it's a little more up to date. All right, that's all I got. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.